On this journey, we knew there would be surprises in store. We expected to meet new people and hear untold stories, to learn the truths behind the lore. Along the way, we discovered the hidden gems of Ireland. in Ireland on a shoestring budget. Please keep this in mind while watching this and other programming under the season as we strive for improvements for season two. We were working with what we had available at the time. This journey began from my departure from Virginia to Oklahoma to meet up with Vanessa so that we could fly out to Ireland. I couldn't shake the dream that I had the night before my departure from Virginia we were somewhere in Ireland investigating. The dream was in black and white. There was a narrow staircase, a woman standing towards the top of the staircase, but all we could see was from her neck down. I described the clothing, only to find out the same night Vanessa had drawn this picture, a picture of a nun. She had no idea where this came from until I decided to tell her about my dream. It wasn't until our arrival in Ireland. We were listening to somebody describe something. I then questioned about the staircase. It seemed to match their home. Okay, so we have been asked to go into a private residence due to activity that's been happening here for quite some time, from what we've been told, having to do with this particular location in this area behind us right here. Um, we're not exactly sure what we're going to find. We have an idea based on images that have come to me through um, automatic drawing and based on feelings that Gwen has had. So we're going to see what happens, see if it is an intelligent haunting, see if it is residual haunting, see if it's a haunting at all. So we're going in with an open, clear mind. So travel with us. The weird dream I had before we even left the States, or before I left Virginia to go to Oklahoma to meet you, um, we might get confirmation. I had a dream of a very narrow stairwell, um, a woman dressed in what we discovered was apparently nun's clothing, but we couldn't see but up to her chin, and she wouldn't come down the steps. Absolutely. So we're going to see what we got. Mm -hmm. Not right. Very narrow steps. Yep. Okay. I'm going to have to do something about my eyes. Give me just a minute, okay? Okay. This hurts a lot. <sighs> yeah. In my dream, it was actually a wall on both sides. So I don't know if this is the actual stairwell or not, but it is narrow. So we'll have to wait and see when we go to some of our other locations. But this feels, this feels right because ironically, um, across the way here is, um, they had, uh, where a bunch of nuns were. I did not know that. And, uh, when we were being told that, it kind of blew me away. Okay. I'm trying to get the burning to stop in my eyes. I'm having a little bit of, it, of an issue with that. Um, immediately was drawn to this particular door right here, which leads out into, I guess what some would call a breezeway leading to the outside, leading directly to the area that Gwen and I have already indicated to where we believe there were nuns that were associated with the convent that is up here in ruins now, um, where 
less than religious acts were going on, and some some of them became pregnant, and in turn, those those children that resulted from those pregnancies are quite possibly in this field back here that that door leads directly to. So that's disconcerting. That is what we're feeling. We we don't at this time have proof of that, but based on the visions that, that I've received, the visions that Gwen's re received, and our automatic drawings, that's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of leaning. It's a very place. uncomfortable feeling in here. It's, there's no circulation of air. It feels very oppressed. Um, I'm, I'm not enjoying myself right now. <laughs> I'm not enjoying myself right now. After close evaluation of the sigh, it was determined that it was not me, as it seemed to be coming from a different direction. But after the sigh, if you notice towards the top left-hand corner, it bends. We questioned if this was something going on with the camera. individual structure that has to do with what this structure sits on and the proximity of the land up there. I would actually say, if I was being honest, that quite a few of these homes would have that to deal with. Gwen, how do you feel about that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, these are very steep. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are very steep. Um, it is a narrow stairwell. Mm -hmm. In my dream that I had, which, by the way, was in black and white. I've never dreamed in black and white before. She was actually standing about one, two, yep, about right here. And Vanessa and I were actually down here, but we couldn't see, like I said, from her chin up, and we couldn't get her to come downstairs. So whatever that means. Okay, I feel like... somebody stands up here and watches through this window. I feel very, 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 very sick to my stomach in this room, as if things are being pulled out of me. Does that make sense? Excuse me. Yeah. You're trying not to throw up. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, for those of you that might hurt it, pardon me, I just belched. Try not to speed a little. Totally different feeling. I don't feel sick in this room at all. Uh uh. It's like it went away as soon yeah. as we hit the hallway, actually. Yeah. And you still have the view. You still have the view. You can still see over but there. But the proximity. But the proximity is a little bit further away. And, okay. You can see something from here that you can't really see from there. Ah, uh, and that is a staple of the convent. Let's see if I can get a shot of that. So much light. Mm -hmm. So much light's coming through. That's weird. We can see it. We can see it perfectly. perfectly. It's like right around in that area, right there. You can vaguely see it, but we can see it plain as day. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Crawl space. can't see anything. I don't have my, oh, there we go. There we go. The venting to the outside. So there's really nothing in here that will cause the noises no. that the client's been hearing. No. I 
I just wanted to check to make sure there was no signs of rodents or anything that would, you know, possibly um, create those types of noises. But I don't see any evidence no. of anything like that. The pipes are good. They're wrapped. This looks the wood is good. Too. Yeah, the wood is good. No signs of any bugs or anything. So, I mean... I don't know why. He, he said it, uh, what, it sounded like he could hear somebody walking. He could hear yes. the boards creak when nobody was here. Exactly. And if you noticed, the whole time we've been here, they haven't creaked unless I we were on them. we walking on them. Right. That is correct. I'm just going to snap a few photos. And I'm aware in these photos that I'm going to see shadows of both myself and Gwen. That is not what we're looking for. No. We're looking for anything that can't be explained. I'm going to try something, Vanessa. I'm going to do... His room is directly underneath. Ah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hand the camera off to you because mm -hmm. I'm just going to do a quick EVP from these stairs. Okay. Just to see um, if there's anything. Put that on. When did you charge this? Yeah. Was it full when it we got full. here? Yeah. It's almost half battery. Shall we? 11 minutes on the camera and we've lost almost half the battery. Go ahead. This is Gwen and Vanessa at uh, her client's private residence. I'm setting the EVP recorder down. walking in this bedroom over here to my right. Do you mean to scare the people that live here? Can you tell us your name? Is there anything that we can do to help you? Turn the camera around and show you the battery. Okay. The hell? Is there anything that we can do to help you? I am going to take a picture <laughs> of this. 
the battery is almost gone. Second recording, private residence. Setting EVP recorder down. Is that you draining the battery on our camera? Again, I'm going to ask you, can you please tell us your name? Do you want us to come back at a later time? Why are you still here? Have you taken a vow of silence? You can make a noise and not speak to let us know that you're here. Can you give us a knock to let us know that you're here? is what's getting me what I can't seem to get past is this camera's battery <laughs> doesn't go from completely full to almost empty in less than 18 minutes no no it does not but yet it has we've used that camera on several investigations mm -hmm. and it did not drain like that no and I took a picture mm -hmm. of what it was that shows the time how long we've actually had the camera on recording. We may have to come back here. Yeah. Later. When sunlight. Oh, God, I feel sick. I know. I do want to get video of inside the room. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm coming. Um, excuse me, Gwen? Yo. What's going on? Why is it pitch black? Pitch black. There's light in this room. That's weird. Let me see something. Turn the overhead light on. Yeah, that's more dim. But there's light coming in through there's the window. There's light coming in through the window. Yeah. So that is serious darkness if there's not artificial light. Serious darkness. Directly above this room is where Gwen and I felt very, very, very ill. And to my knowledge, this is the homeowner's private bedroom directly below it. 
of the homeowner is the one that has had multiple experiences in this home. Yet, without artificial light, this room was pitch black, at least according to the viewfinder on the, on the camera. Once we get back and look at the recording, we'll be able to tell even better, but you couldn't see anything. And I had the camera light on. Yes, camera light on, natural light coming through the window, pitch black. I'm going to hand this off to you, Gwen, because I don't know how to turn it off. Okay, let me stop this because I hit this just in case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're almost dead. Okay, well, we are going to conclude this segment real quick before my battery is completely dead. I'm going to grab my things. Okay. <clears throat> I think it's safe to say that we probably need to come back. Yes. fence and the greenery uh -huh. meat. I like that. Picking up the keys. Just in case anyone heard anything and it wanted to think that was something. Hmm. Okay. In my opinion, it is all associated with that man. It is. <sighs> wow. Okay. Well, we're going to conclude this and gather our stuff and our wits about us and figure out what's next. We're trying to leave the residence, and the door won't lock. Or Vanessa, I will yeah, not lie. I'm having to. Oh, guess what? what? I've got a full battery now. Oh, you fucking kidding I'm me. I'm not kidding you. Take a picture. Look. It's showing full battery. Look at that. Wow. Full battery. Okay. And... This is ridiculous. Sure as hell, it's showing full battery. I did not change the battery, folks. Now it won't let me unlock it, and it's open. Okay, let me see if I can figure this out now. Okay. It's like she don't want us to go. Something. Hang on, Vanessa. Get I don't want to break the key. On I know anymore. you don't, but here, let me just let me see something. Okay. Are you still recording? Yes. And before before we claim that to be paranormal, y'all, we are going to verify this with the homeowner that this isn't a common problem. Out front. We're gonna, we gotta figure this out. Yes. 
I was going to see if it worked for me, because if it worked for me, I was going to say, she wants to talk to you. Yeah. You need to go in there several hours. Well, I just need to go ahead and let you know, honey. I know you want to talk to us, but we really have to get back to the hotel. If I, rem if I, if I promise we will come back, would you please let me lock this door? Please. We're not ignoring. We want to know exactly what you've got to say when you feel comfortable in saying it. But I can't leave this young man's house unlocked. So please let me lock it. There's a kid in the background down the street playing. Want to message them? We can't leave it unlocked. Nope. It locked? Yes. With no issues whatsoever. As soon as I said something about messaging uh -huh. them. Side note, that's a child running through the little field beside us playing. Yes, folks, what you're seeing is a child's playground directly next to a graveyard. I'm trying to figure out why it's anchored into the ground. Mm, maybe it was leaning? I've never seen that before. We'll have to check into that. It's anchored into the ground. Yet one of the arms of the cross is, miss is broken off and just sitting there. And um, for those who are watching, we are aware that there very well could be rational reasons for some of the things that we say. We get that. We understand that. But what if it isn't rational? have to keep your mind open to the possibility so that we can better understand not just the connectivity of our lives, but what happens after them. St. Mary's Convent. It was built in 1876 as it was preparing for the arrival of the Sisters of Charity a year later in 1877. It would be years after that that the Sisters of Mercy would occupy the building. Approximately 75 homeless children were placed in their care. Services offered to the town of Valadrine by the Sisters of Charity 
included laundry service, shirt and collar maker, along with preparing harps and shamrocks for export for St. Patrick's Day. Once Sisters of Charity left, they were replaced by the Sisters of Mercy in 1971. It was the same year the orphanage closed. A nun's graveyard in Wald Orchard is located within the site of the building and is no longer in use. This is not the same graveyard that we saw from the street by the client's house. Whether if you believe in the supernatural or not, you couldn't help but feel the energies, a heaviness almost, as we were walking away from the convent. We really wanted to get in and to explore more, but it has since been bought by a private owner and is now undergoing renovations. Perhaps when we return, the owner will be generous enough for us to take a walk and a look around inside. Maybe have a few sessions, who knows. At this time, all we know is, despite of historical reference, superstition, folktale and lore, you can't help but wonder what exactly did happen there? Who were the people and what were their stories? Nothing attached to you. Hey, Claire, you didn't say I was sure. Back it up. Don't go in the bed. Don't go in a room. Back it up. Can you get my good ankle while we're doing you're, this? It's completely Seriously? blurred. Yes. Okay. You're completely blurred. Let's come outside. <laughs> so, we went to the private residence that you and I were discussing. Mm -hmm. And we had some really interesting experiences, but there's one thing that I need to ask you about, because you own a set of keys to the location as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Has there ever been any issue locking or unlocking the door? Yeah. In what way? Uh, to get it locked, I used to like have to jimmy the lock up the way, sometimes. Not all the time. Not all the time. No. Does how often or how long does it take you to be able to get it locked? Um, a couple seconds, thirty seconds, forty seconds, maybe. <laughs> Took us about ten minutes. Yeah. Took us about ten minutes. Mm -hmm. um, as we were in the area, I can tell you right now, um, his bedroom is okay. The one directly above it is not okay. That's the that's the place he heard. Yes, and it's understandable as to why. Um, the proximity of the window in that bedroom out over the field that we have discussed previously is perfect. She stands up there and watches. The second you walk out that bedroom and you hit the window that has the opening underneath to the crawl space there, you're fine. That bedroom is not fine. We both got ill. Yes, we both got ill. Um, we believe that the reason that you're unable, or at least we at this time were unable to get anything on EVP is because she took a vow of silence. True. So that's really kind of interesting. The other... Well, it would be interesting to see, you know, if you really edit those EVPs. I mean, we need to go into We're going, Yeah, we need to go on them with headphones. You know, yeah, exactly. Yes. Just to see. I'm the same way. When I don't find something first off, I go, right, okay. It'll come when it comes. And then, clear your mind, listen to it. Yep. Well, here's the catch. Let's <laughs> give him a moment. Okay. Here's the catch. Um, we went in with a completely full battery. Mm -hmm. Completely full. Mm -hmm. On camera. On mm -hmm. camera. Within 18 minutes, less than 18 minutes, we had a quarter of a battery left. We just, and I took a picture of it. Mm -hmm. We go ahead, close everything down, 
decide that we're going to go ahead and leave and possibly come back later. Maybe it, the timing might have been off to get anything overt. Mm-hmm. We go to lock the door. Can't lock the door to save our lives. Anthony reports to me that uh, sometimes he feels like someone's pulled the door. You know? Mm-hmm. So could not lock it to save our lives. Here's the catch. Gwen started filming. Yeah, one second. Yeah. Gwen started filming me trying to lock the door. Yeah. Full battery. Oh, it Full. gets better. It, 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 it gets, gets better. better. When we were trying to get the um, lock on the door to work, mm-hmm. Vanessa was trying and trying and trying. And then I was like, well, step to the side and let me try. Mm-hmm. Because my thought process was if it locks for me and not her, they won't talk to her and not me. You see what I'm saying? I was taking that as a sign. Mm-hmm. So we got it on video, me trying to, you know, the key is turning, mm-hmm. but the tumbler is not flipping the lock at all. It would not come out of the door. It would at not. All. So Vanessa's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I was like, well, you know, we're going to have to message them because we can't leave his house unlocked. Mm-hmm. As soon as I said that, click, Boom. the door Boom. locked. Locked immediately. Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've never really had that problem. I mean, normally I'd come out, lock the door, and stuff, but Anthony. He said to me that someone like was pulling it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It would but, not um, me. but he's leaving that house. I, I actually would recommend that. Yeah. I don't know why he recommends that. Well, the house next door uh, had two occupants in it, and they left. Mm-hmm. Gone. Wow. Yeah. I think what that, did I say? I mm-hmm. think I think even the house up from that mm-hmm. is vacant as well. There's a lot of like a mm-hmm. lovely little estate, which it is. Yes. yes. Lovely little housing community. But it's the area. Yes, mm-hmm. it is, and that's exactly. We actually have me on film yeah. yep. saying that, and Someone, that it wasn't just his house; that it was the other houses up. Yeah. What I'm feeling in here, it's not. Doesn't have anything to do with this individual structure. It has to do with what this structure sits on, and the proximity of the land over there. I would actually say, if I was being honest, that quite a few of these homes would have that to deal with. When we walked in, when you started coming down the hall, I, I was telling Vanessa to come back down the hall because something told me to start rolling again. Had a full battery again. Okay, I hadn't sw- I had just switched the battery before this last break. Okay, but between where we were and back here to the hotel, hadn't switched the battery. Full battery. Okay, well I'm gonna hit record. We start going down the hallway. She's a complete blur. You cannot make her out at all. And I was like, Vanessa, you're a complete blur. And she was like, what? I said, come back to me. Mm-hmm. Now you're blurring. <laughs> I said, come back to me. She starts walking back to me. It gets even more blurrier. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, my camera just goes, blip. Done. Red battery, shut down. New battery now. We came out here. I used that same battery for the first part of this. Mm-hmm. And you keep going in and out of focus, and I don't know why I've been standing here this whole time. Could be the light, maybe. I don't know. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. And the light in there. Yeah. Yeah, true. true. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't know. Although we wanted to dig deeper into the history behind the home and behind St. Mary's Cathedral, we were limited not only to time, but to resources during our stay there. We've spoken with many people, some who knew people that were in the orphanage as orphans, and some who knew some of the nuns. Depending on who you spoke with, depended on the story that you got, but it still doesn't explain for the odd things that happened to our equipment while investigating in and around that area. We're hoping to return one day and able to give a more extensive, detailed investigation into this phenomenal, beautiful structure. Maybe find out more of the history of the town, as it's quite the town. We really enjoyed our stay here learning of the history, the past, the resilience of its people. And we would like to thank each of you who took the time to entertain us, to educate us, and for allowing us to come into your town to learn more about it. We're looking forward to our return, and we hope to see each and every one of you there.